All right, everyone, this is Ross, and welcome to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night at 9 o'clock Eastern. We talk a lot about fruits, a lot about vegetables, and we like to highlight different and particular, particularly strange fruits and vegetables, things you may not have heard of. We like to talk about figs quite often, um, and that's a strange and interesting fruit, I think, to many people. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the fruit quince and quince is a fruit that i have yet to grow and i think i'm very strongly considering growing it out of pretty much all the different new fruits or vegetables that i could try um, i think this may be the one perennial i'm considering planting in my yard um, and i'll tell you why so first off this is what the fruit looks like here it kind of is um kind of looks like a pear in a way it also sort of looks like weird types of guavas i guess um but it's related to the pear and it's a bit strange looking uh, you can see there's some seeds in there um, and you can also see this stuff here which is called membrio or quince paste we're going to get to that in a bit but quince is um it's kind of like the worst version of a pear if you could sort of compare it like that let, let, let's let's compare an apple to a jujube in terms of fresh eating um the apple is going to win you know it's the same thing with the pear compared to the quince is that the pear is going to win in terms of fresh eating now where the quince really shines is in the the processing here and you can process it down into um, many different forms it makes some of the best jam I have a friend of mine who swears that it does make the best jam uh, it has a high pectin content so you don't really have to just add any pectin um, it's really just good in its own um, and it's really simple to, to grow it's really simple to pick and it's really simple to process I for those reasons at least to me um, it seems like a no-brainer here because I have limited space. It's not really a large tree either. It is subject to fire blight. Um, there are some varieties that are not very hardy, but there are some now that are kind of floating around that you can find that are like hardy to zone five. Um, so hardiness is not really an issue. Other than the fire blight, which I do struggle with here, I've ha I have struggled with here, um, I would say it's a pretty darn good tree in a backyard setting. They don't really get all that big. Um, you can also, what you do is, you didn't, you may not have known this, and you can go into this thread here on growingfruit.org. Uh, it's called Who's Growing Quince? And it's got a lot of great information in here. What some people do, believe it or not, is they will grow their quince trees out and then take some cuttings off of that and actually just stick them in the ground and they'll propagate uh, from cutting. A lot of these quince trees are grown on their own roots. They're not really grafted. Um, I'm sure they are, some of them, but uh, most of these that you're going to get from nurseries and whatnot, I found are just going to be on their own roots. So you can stick cuttings in the ground if you want, and that can make a pretty decent rootstock for pear trees if you wanted, um, or even just rootstock for quince. And uh, I think it's pretty decent way to do it I mean it's a dwarfing rootstock most of these will be somewhat dwarfing um, but uh, yeah in a backyard setting it's not a bad thing you know I have like a, a, a kind of the way I picture these trees is kind of like an Asian persimmon tree you know it's gonna get to maybe 10 to 12 to 14 feet tall you know similar circumference and uh, you're gonna have yourself a tree that you can easily manage it's gonna give you some large fruit these are large really large fruits i think they're most of them are larger than pears um <clears throat> and then you can easily pick them because they're so large and then very easily process them i imagine it's probably just as simple as peeling the skin and then boiling them down like you would do any other jam uh, of any other fruit you know just add in your sugar you don't have to add in any pectin you're good to go you got yourself some really awesome jam um, you can cook with them in so many different ways that it's incredible. Um, I imagine it's quite fruity, um, kind of pear-like, so you could probably add them to salads. You could probably add them to, um, you know, make this uh, membrio here is what it's called. 
some people I guess call it uh, quince cheese is another name for it and um, again it's like a thick jelly people eat it with cheese um, yeah I mean think about anything you could do with like an apple or a pear in terms of cooking you could probably do the same thing with quince and um, it may even be better than those for certain things I'm sure you could do a cider uh, they're a bit dry you know um, so when you bite into them it's kind of like eating a drier pear similar like I said in the beginning of this video to like a jujube compared to an apple it's the jujube is like a drier apple uh, when fresh when in its its apple state you know there's two different states of jujubes um, but I think this is pretty cool and here's like a nice little recipe of how to make membrio um, really doesn't seem all that that difficult um, you know a lot of people like they're saying here in the article saying that uh, you know when you eat them fresh are not really all that great they have a grainy texture um, it's not really a big thing that for them that's kind of dry um, so what you got to do essentially is that you have to process them and you can eat some of them fresh there are some varieties I've found like aromatnea is one of them that you can eat fresh not that you probably are gonna want to but you can see here it can be eaten fresh and if this is one of them that's really hearty down to uh, minus 25 degrees Fahrenheit so that's pretty good a hundred you know pounds of fruit per tree on a pretty small tree that's pretty good um, and it's just you know a similar thing here with these different varieties the rich dwarf quince tree again this is quite quite hardy you may have to find the right chill hours for you depending on where you guys live um, you may have to find one that's probably a bit more um, maybe disease resistant to fire blight in terms of these varieties but that that's what I would focus on is if you're trying to grow one of these find one that's the right size that's got the right disease resistance the right chill hours and the right hardiness for wherever you guys are at um, you know and and of course you know give it the same neglect that you're gonna give the rest of your trees don't baby them you know uh, make sure you, you're doing things like spraying um, dormant oils um, <clears throat> trying to help the tree in a time of fire blight keeping an eye out for fire blight um, you know we're not feeding the trees too much we're not watering the trees too much you know etc etc I just think it's it's probably one of the best if not the best choice that I can go from here in my yard to try something new um, I'm really considering it um, pretty strongly for this upcoming spring I may order myself a tree as you can see right here they're on sale some of these places are always in stock it seems like of quince because they're just not that popular uh, for whatever reason and um, you know I can't definitively say myself that this is like you know amazing amazing fruit um, but I would say out of a lot of the things that you have to process in terms of fruits or vegetables this is probably one of the easiest in terms of just overall general care as I mentioned with dealing with the tree picking the fruits and then processing the fruits themselves it just seems to be overall a really simple process um, <clears throat> so yeah highly recommend it this is a pretty short episode here of fruit talk I do want to mention I guess before I let you guys go is that we've got some um, garden plans that have been going on for those of you guys who have been following along with the YouTube channel you'll know that in our garden section here we've basically started um, our crops it's pretty early in the season now um, we've had a really really mild winter I guess I haven't really had a chance to update you guys on this just yet um, but you can see I've also joined a community garden we have all this laid out we have everything planned we're gonna be starting seeds again very soon um, for a next set of crops we just got our crops into the cold frame which allowed us to even extend our season even further on top of this mild winter um, <clears throat> we're pretty much uh, you know really going really limiting ourselves and what we're growing in terms of these different varieties these different more experimental things this year I've really just decided to take a step back and uh, grow what I know is going to be successful what I like to eat 
what I found to be very tasty. Um, you know, in terms of the tomato varieties, as exam as an example, we grew like what eighteen different varieties last year. The pink brandy wine's always a favorite. The black cherry is like the best cherry tomato I've ever tried. Um, green zebra is a wonderful acidic green tomato that's quite productive. Um, you can do almost anything with it. The garden peach tomato, you know, that's one that there's the only one that I'm I'm trying this year. Um, besides that, we've got things like arugula. I'm going to plant very soon. I have to do some bed prep outside. Um, I have to find myself some good quality soil. We're going to put down a pretty good amount of, uh, you know, probably organic um, fertilizers. And I'm going to also do some serious micronutrients into this one bed that I have because I know I may struggle with that bed this year. Um, I'm also going to probably save some of that organic fertilizer for the community garden as well as get myself a bunch of straw. We've got ourselves some soil pretty recently that's been on sale, $3.50 for two cubic feet of soil. Um, not the best soil we talked about on the YouTube channel, but um, you know, still, it's been pretty, um, pretty wonderful uh, getting all this stuff together and, and really uh, kind of honing this in and we're, you know we are trying some new stuff don't get me wrong like you know we are gonna do some corn um, that I've never successfully done before so I guess that's sort of new we're doing a lot of different beans this year that I've never done before um, you know the rest of this is pretty uh, pretty much common sense at this point I've done it all um, and that's sort of what we've been sort of focusing on this year is again like I said getting all this stuff in that we know is good we know we're going to eat and also because i have so much more room now at the community garden that's 30 by 30 i mean you can grow so much food in that space and uh things that usually take up a lot of space it becomes a lot easier to um to grow those things so like things like corn which i've never had success with you know a lot of these different squashes and melons and musk melons and cantaloupe and the watermelons you know, we're going to do a lot of onions and potatoes for um, for storage and things like that. So I'm excited. And we also have some beans that we'll grow for, for shelling um, and then have preserved beans throughout the wintertime. I'm looking forward to it. I think we're going to have a lot of food that we can use throughout not just the summer and not just the spring or the fall, but for the entirety of the year. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. So I want to thank you guys out there for sticking with the podcast fruit talk thank you guys for watching we'll talk to everybody soon all right and uh check us out on fig boss facebook and instagram um and we'll see you guys for next week's episode of fruit talk